Hello everybody, and welcome to Healing Vibrations. Today we're going to do something a little different. We are going to be talking a bit about animal massage. Excuse me, I'm going to be pulling kitty cat hair off my face probably the whole entire video. And um, but yeah, our little star of the show is my cat Tigger. Tigger, you want to say hi to everybody? Why don't you give him a little hello? Oh, he's a little bashful. Um, but yeah, we'll be talking about um, how beneficial massage actually is for cats. And I know it might sound silly, but animals benefit from massage just as much as humans do. Um, in everyday life, I mean, they're, they're quite active. They're always scratching on the posts, working out those biceps, getting those, uh, getting those muscles stimulated. And, uh, oh no, here, bribe them. Yeah, here's a little bribery. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, you tried to leave. You tried to leave the shot. What do you think this is? What do you think this is, Tiggy? Um, but yeah, so with animal massage, you can, when you are just normally petting a cat, it, I mean, they might get up and go, but the difference with animal massage is when you actually work into their into their muscles and actually palpate their muscles and feel the areas of tension, they they usually submit. Yeah. Usually. There we go. There we go. Let's get you comfy. Let's get you comfy. No, don't. You're trying to bail from the shot. No bail. We need you, kid. You're drooling everywhere. You're drooling everywhere. So, yeah, we, we bring the microphone a little closer so you can hear his little purr. So you get a healing vibration from him. And um, let me bribe him just a little bit longer. This is usually his weakness. And um, he usually does not leave this. But I think he knows that he's on camera. He's a little camera shy. We're not paying him enough to be in the shot. And uh, so he's not, he's not very tempted. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good guy. Oh. Tell him what you got to say with your prayer. Excuse me, it's a bit warm in here. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, so it is difficult with animals compared to humans for getting them to actually sit still for the animal massage. Um, but it is a growing trend. And, um, you know, lots of animals suffer from arthritis. They suffer from hip problems, especially German shepherds. Um, horses also are very, you know prone to injury because of how active they are in the racing. And so animal massage is actually extremely beneficial for horses. Um, they're actually in high demand massage therapists for horses specifically. Um, but yeah, so what we'll do is we'll just go through a little, yeah, what's up kid? What's up kid? We'll just go through his little muscles. Usually the main muscles that I work with on Tigger and my other cat, Perseus, which makes quite a few cameos in our other shows, um, are his biceps. And as I said before, that's probably his shoulders and biceps are their most used muscles as well as their hips. And um, the hip discomfort, oh, that's why lots of animals like it when you work on their back. See how he just goes up like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you like that, don't you? Oh, you like that, don't you? Oh, you gonna... Anyways, pff, I'm just covered in cat hair, as you can see. <laughs> oh, little guy, come on. We need you right now. Hey, we had an agreement, remember? Remember all those treats I told you I was going to give you? Remember all those treats I told you you were going to get? Uh, so, yeah, I like to work in... Work into his muscles lightly. I mean, their muscles aren't like human muscles where they're more dense and thick. They're actually quite soft and pliable. Um, but as you work through the body, you will find areas where it actually feels a bit sticky. Like some areas you'll feel the muscles and it'll just be moving really easily. Whereas some areas will feel like it's more tightly knit to the, uh, more tightly knit to the, to the bone. And the fascia gets sticky, and when the fascia gets sticky, 
it can bring them discomfort. And obviously they can't quite express this discomfort that they have. But when you when you dip in slowly and you just, you know, slowly work the muscles. Oh, we got little Perseus. Hey, bud. Did you come for a massage too? What's up, bud? So he doesn't want to be here. But it looks like little Perseus does. Come here, kid. Do you want to come join the TV? There we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good exchange. So Perseus, he does enjoy the actual animal massage quite a bit more than Tigger does. Um, Tigger more likes the scratches, whereas Perseus, he does scratch on a lot of stuff, which is, you know, quite common for kitty cats. Um, so his biceps, he loves it when I work his little biceps. I like to work in on the joints. The joints are the areas that get pretty sticky. You know, their neck muscles are just like human neck muscles. You know, lots of humans get the forward head syndrome, especially using cell phones all the time. And our neck get, actually gets neglected for massage. But as you know, most kitties love the neck scratch. But you can also feel their cheek muscles, their mandibles. And... Obviously, they do a lot of chewing because cats love to eat and they love to lick, so they're using their jaws quite a bit. And you wouldn't think it, but those jaw muscles do get tender. They do get sore, don't they, kid? Oh, you like that, huh? My boy. You like that, don't you? I give them little scratches here and there, but um, for the most part... Perseus is the one that, when I find a spot that's tight, he'll actually stick around as he's done, as you can see. His neck muscles get really tight, so usually people will just give it a scratch, but what I'll do is I'll just actually work in there, and I'll work my way all the way to his cervical vertebrae, and I'll just kind of go through his transverse processes. And so now that he's he likes the neck work, so I'm assuming that might be an area of discomfort for him as to, you know, usually same as with humans. When something feels good, it's usually because it needs, needs the touch. So I'll go to his connecting points for each of his muscles. Lots of them trace back down to his chest and his little pecs, which I like to work in the pecs to loosen up his shoulders because when your pecs get too tight, they can actually pull your short shoulders forward, which it happens to humans and it happens to animals. Um, let's see how his little forearms are. Can we work on your forearms, bud? Oh, I'm not sure if you can hear his sweet little purr from there, but he definitely is enjoying himself. His forearms actually get really tight also, and I think that also contributes to how he's always using the scratching post. Um, it's funny when cats use... Hi. Uh, when they find something that's really soft and fluffy, they'll do this little cat massage, as you probably know and have seen. And when they do that cat massage... Just as we use our hands, we're working our forearms because the forearm muscles connect to all of our fingers. And same works for the cat's paws. And so when they use those forearms too much, they end up getting tight. And I just find the little muscles, find his little extensors and his little flexors. His flexors are actually pretty tight. And you could feel the density of his muscle. Oh, yeah, is that, is that a good spot right there? Oh, is it a good spot? <laughs> yeah, he definitely likes the massage, and most animals do. Tigger's just a little camera shy, as you can see. And it is spring, so they are shedding like mad. As you can see, we've got quite a bit of hair here. <laughs> yeah, you guys are just so shedy, huh? You're just so shitty. So now let's work back on the hips. Yeah. How's the hip? 
Oh, is there a little love bite for your dad? Thank you. So, yeah, the main areas that I work on with Perseus, it's usually you have to get the animal when they're in the mood because you know how cats work. It's much easier for dogs and horses because they're a little bit more obedient. Cats tend to be in their own world on their own time. And when they're on their own time, if you want to give them a little massage, it's not going to happen. So, luckily, we're on Perseus's time. And his time can coincides with our time, doesn't it, bud? But yeah, so let's get back to the muscles. His hips actually get really tight also. And I mean, with most animals and most cats especially, they'll get in their crazy cat mode and they'll just be sprinting and running all over the place, like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Which is good because animals need exercise. But just as with humans, when animals and humans get exercise, that makes muscles tight. And so his hips, you can feel his, I like to palpate all around the bone and find his connective tissue and just work my way in to, hmm, work my way in to sticky areas. Yeah, that's good. Is that good, kid? Lots of cats are also very similar as they are with humans for sensitivity in the stomach. Most people don't, they, they hold a lot in their stomach and so usually they don't like to be touched in their stomach. But with some cats, what? What is it? Is it because I went for your tummy? You don't like that. He's agreeing. Most cats don't like to be touched on their stomach. Okay, okay. Is that an area of discomfort? Do you have a blockage? I'm just trying to work your blockages out. So he'll guide me to where he wants to be massaged. He'll guide me to what areas are bothering him most. And uh, the hips, apparently, they don't lie. And um, he does not want work there. So we'll work our way back up to his neck. Work back up to his cervical vertebrae. Is that good? Yeah, you like the neck more, huh? That's good. Yeah, it's funny because when you palpate, you can actually feel each individual vertebrae in his neck. And you can find the areas that just don't feel like the rest. And that's how you're able to tell if an area is dense or sticky because it's not going to feel like the rest of the vertebrae. And uh, when you find that sticky area, then that's when you just... I'll just take my finger and just do little cross fiber frictions in between the vertebrae. Just very simple stuff. Lots of times when you go to the vet, they, you know, will either give them pain meds or steroids. But sometimes, just like humans, they just need a good, solid massage. Body work is beneficial to anybody. Isn't that right, Perseus? Isn't that right, bud? It's funny feeling on his skull. You can feel his little occiput. Usually the occiput is where we carry a lot of tension. And that's where when people get tension headaches, it, lots of times it comes from the muscles there. And when you think of a cat, when it's down like this, it's always using that those occiput muscles. And so that's why cats like that neck rubs so much because that is an area that gets tension build up and when you work out that tension you actually feel the muscles becoming more soft and the softer they come become the more pliable they become and the more loose they become and you decrease the tension just like in a human huh boy you want to tell them how good this massage is do I got the right techniques? Are my palpation skills up to par? You wanna give him, you wanna let him know how you're doing? No, no comment? I think his eyes tell, I think that his eyes tell a good story. Yeah? What is it? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's also really nice to work down his spine and 
find that, again just those areas of tension it doesn't require too much pressure oh you don't want that spot we want you there okay so he's pretty good at communicating he gives fair warnings on what what he likes and what he doesn't like don't you you let me know you're a good communicator you're a good communicator aren't you yeah, so you don't need to do, you know, an hour-long massage on your animals because since their muscles are quite significantly smaller than ours, it only takes a few squeezes here and there to actually get those muscles to loosen up. And when they loosen up, you'll feel the tension difference. I also try to use get both sides just because you want to create balance. And when you... When you massage one area without massaging another, it will create an imbalance in the body. Same as it does if you're working someone the right side of someone's back and you don't work on the left side, the left side's still going to be tight and it's going to be pulling, causing friction on the spine, and then it becomes a little battle, a little game of tug of war with your muscles. And so it's really good to, whatever you work on, to work on both sides to create that even balance so there's no tug of war. Yeah. He's doing good. Okay, let's work down the spine now. So it's good when they're laying like this because you can actually really feel both sides appropriately to see those areas of tension hmm. his back's actually pretty good because he gets quite a bit of massages from daddy yeah you're spoiled aren't you see with my fingers as I'm using my fingers like this I'm actually going in between each of his vertebrae and just shift in the tissue shift in the tissue working in between his scapula you know, lots of humans hold tension in their rhomboids because we tend to carry the world on our shoulders. Animals do the same because, I mean, they're always walking on all fours, so their shoulders and their scapulars are going to be constantly used, which is going to require extra attention. Ain't that right, Purse? Ain't that right, Purse? See, they have a group of spinal muscles that run all up and down their spine. And when we clear those up, it increases the blood flow, increases the oxygen, and decreases the tension. And a happy kitty is a nice kitty. Lots of cats like it behind the ears. It's usually a, a weak point for a cat when you're, when you're wanting to give them love and get them to stay. Behind the ears is a good spot. Usually the areas that the cats love the most are good indicators on what areas to work on. And, uh, you know, lots of people just superficially scratch. Lots of times it might annoy a cat. I mean, obviously, they like to be scratched, as any any creature does. But when you work in those muscles, they will react differently. And sometimes they'll come to you when they have those areas of discomfort, and they'll actually come to you and want you to actually massage specific areas. Like, Perseus will come up, and he'll take his little paw, and he'll place it on my arm. He'll be like, oh, your little hands, your little phalanges. They want a nice little massage. So I'll just just kind of break them up. And work in between his little tiny little tiny phalanges. Working through his little paw fingers. Yeah, because they get tight. All that scratching. All that clawing on all of our furniture. It's exhausting. It gets exhausting for a cat. And then I like to and the massage with nice little kitty cat strokes 
absorb all of the fur, which is real good. You get it all over the place. Because, you know, when cats have too much hair, they get hot, just like humans. Animals are very similar to humans in many ways. Muscles, the way they think, the way they act, their personality differences. And when a cat's got tension, he can get a bit grumpy. So, when you're working with your cat, just make sure to work light, work soft, shift the muscles around a bit, just move them individually. And you've got yourself a cat massage. Everyone can benefit from a massage, including your animals. Thanks for joining us today, Healing Vibrations. Have fun with your animals. And give them massages too.